I have had so many people over time ask me, how in the world do you stay so thin in your 50s? Well, today we are taking a dive into what I eat in a day and what I do for exercise. Hey friends, so good to see you all again today. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with all of your family, and I hope you're getting just a little breather in before all of the holiday madness comes upon us again. Oh so yeah, I get asked this all the time. People wanna know, what do I eat? What do I do for exercise? So I thought this is a perfect time of year to cover this because it will give you maybe a little bit of inspiration or maybe some new ideas as we're heading into the new year. Before we get into it, I just wanna make it clear that I am not a doctor and I'm not saying what I do is what you need to do. I'm just here to share what has worked for me and also hope that maybe this gives someone inspiration or ideas that may have been thinking about changing things up for themselves anyway. All right, so let's start out with what I do. Once I get out of bed, it's always focusing on a cup of coffee. <laughs> Is anybody with me on that? I cannot do my mornings without my coffee. I used to make my coffee in a Keurig and for years I loved it, that's what I did. But since coming back from Italy, we had espressos over there a lot of the mornings and I really got to like that. So I went and bought an espresso machine on Amazon. It's a cheapy little thing, but it works really well for what I need. And that's how I make my coffee. Now I do have to buy ground coffee for it. We have a little Italian market up by our house in Michigan. So I'll go get Lavasa coffee, which is a really good Italian brand. I think you can actually get that on Amazon as well. Now this machine, is actually perfect for someone who is used to making one cup at a time like you would with your Keurig, but it just makes a more bold, stronger coffee, which I seem to be liking a lot more lately, like an espresso. To my coffee, I will add stevia. I get this stevia, this liquid stevia from Trader Joe. I like it to sweeten my coffee because it is a natural type sugar and it, you don't need to use as much as I would with using like teaspoons of sugar. And then for milk, uh, since I don't really eat a lot of dairy at all, I add a little bit of almond milk, or if I have it, I'll add oat milk into my coffee. And taking that, <laughs> sitting on the couch with little Bentley snuggled up next to me in the morning is just like my perfect way to wake up. And once I've finally woken up, which sometimes takes a little while, I get myself ready to go out for a walk. Now, I don't do this every day of the week. I will walk, go out and walk maybe three, four days a week. Generally for me, I will walk between two and three and a half miles, let's say. And for me, that works out really well. Now, I had to work my way up to that. I didn't just go full bore the first day that I went out walking. So if you're just starting out, maybe take it slow, do a half a mile, you know, do what you can do and work your way up slowly. So oh, that's one thing that I do for exercise. I feel like it's really important to get my joints moving in the morning and I don't feel so stiff when I do that. The other thing that I do, which I'm gonna be showing you guys tomorrow, is yoga. So Mark and I do yoga twice a week and we go to this class that's an hour and 20 minutes long each. So we're getting like two and a half hours of yoga in a week as well. And that's wonderful for stretching out all of your muscles. And it really just feels, it makes me feel like I'm less stiff. I can move more. My flexibility is not taken away from me. So we love that. Then after my walk is done, I come back home and I make my breakfast. So let's get into the kitchen and I'll show you what I make. All right, my friends, it is time to make us some breakfast. Breakfast is one of my favorite meals of the day. I'm not a person that could ever skip breakfast because I'd get too darn cranky, to be honest with you. And my family can attest to that. I need to eat food. <laughs> I have a couple of different staples that I will switch from from time to time. So the one I'm making and showing you today is my oatmeal breakfast. I'll kind of go through these breakfasts where I'll stick with one for months and then I'll switch and I'll go to the other one for months. <laughs> so I'm a creature of habit 
most of the time when it comes to my breakfast. So let's get started and let me show you what I do. First, I'm starting out with the oatmeal packets. They're the steel cut oats. They say that steel cut oats take longer to break down in your system so you get energy for a longer period of time than the simple quick oats will give you. So I'm gonna start with two packs of this and I will add some other things so it's gonna up the calories, but for me, it's all right. Now you're gonna laugh at me and that's okay, but the first thing I add to my oatmeal and I always have banana baby food. <laughs> yep, you heard me right, banana baby food. Here's the thing, I like it better than sliced bananas because it really adds a nice texture mixed in with my oatmeal. I don't have to puree it on my own because it's already done for you. People at the grocery store probably think I'm nuts, but I buy one pack of this and I use probably about half of one of these at a time and it really just makes it a nice consistency, creamy, it adds a nice flavor to the oatmeal as well, instead of it just being plain. Now to this bowl, we are going to add a little bit of chopped walnuts. The walnuts add a healthy protein to your breakfast. Then I'm gonna add just a few dried cranberries, just for flavor. And then I like to buy a bag of frozen blueberries. This bag will stay fresh, obviously, for so much longer than if I buy uh, fresh blueberries. So I can take a little bit out at a time as I'm making my oatmeal. And I know that all the rest is gonna stay great in the freezer until I need it the next time. So for me, because the blueberries are frozen, I just mix it into my oatmeal and that kind of makes them a little bit warmer or you can put them in a separate bowl, put them in the microwave for 15 seconds or so, and then add them to your bowl. Now, the last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of organic light agave. I like this because it's a natural kind of sweetener. You could also use honey if you don't have something like this. And there you go, perfect breakfast. Mm. This is so good, so filling as well. can tell you're seeing me fast forwarded in my day because when you saw me earlier making my breakfast and doing my walk I get up out of bed put my hair up and that's it <laughs> right now it's about 12 30 in the afternoon I'm getting ready to make one of my favorite lunches it's so good and it's so good for you so let's head into the kitchen and I'll show you what we're making I am showing you how to make cowboy caviar this is one of my favorite lunches because it is just chock full of vitamins and nutrients and really good protein and fat. So I'm gonna get going to make this and let me show you how it turns out. for two days. So I'll eat half of it, put half of it in the container for tomorrow, good to go. Prepare once, eat twice. I love this. It's so good 
and I know it's good for me. Just to tell you, the lunch that I made, you can revise that a little bit if you are a meat eater or you don't like beans, then maybe take a chicken breast and cube it, chop it up into small cubes and mix that in instead of a can of black beans. You have to do you and make it something that you'll enjoy. There is enough goodness in that cowboy caviar that you're gonna get from all the vitamins and nutrients in what's in there, even if you don't use the beans. You're probably thinking, all right, Angela, what do you do for snacks? I'm a big snacker, I love my snacks in between lunch and dinner time, and in the evening when we're sitting watching TV, I think it's just a habit, but I'll show you what I eat for if I'm craving something salty or if I'm craving something sweet. These are really good choices that are low in calories, but it still gives me what I'm craving. We are back in the kitchen to talk about snacks. I've got some salty snacks and I've got some sweet snacks. Now, I love a bag of chips once in a while. Not a whole bag at a time, but you know, I like to get in some chips once in a while. Um, I mean, I'm human, but these are the things that are more standard for me. So the first choice that I tend to gravitate towards when I want something salty is popcorn. Now I get this Orville Redenbacher natural, simply salted. It doesn't taste like cardboard and it's got just a little sea salt in there, a little butter flavor to it. It's way healthier of a choice to me anyway, than getting like the butter movie theater style popcorn. Here's what I do to beef this up a little bit. I will take some ranch dip mix. And what I'll do is I'll sprinkle it on my bowl of popcorn and it really adds a nice flavor. Now, yes, it adds more salt. So if you need to watch it, watch it on the salt, you may not wanna do this. The next thing I'll reach for, usually between lunch and dinner, if I'm feeling like I need something a little bit salty, are either a packet of these pistachios. They're 120 calories for a packet, and it seems like there's a good amount in each of these packets. This is great to put in your purse or your travel bag, uh, keep in your car. So this will get you through uh, until you get home to have something a little bit healthier than stopping at you know McDonald's or Burger King for those nummy french fries. They're gonna be way more calories than something like this. The other thing I tend to choose are roasted almonds. I do like the salt better than the natural. I need a little salt to mine. But because of that, they're so good that you can tend to eat a little bit more than maybe you should. Because while this is a healthier fat, it's still fat, you know, let's be real. So I will get a little dish, I will pour a handful and then pour it into the little dish. And I put the bag away and I walk away with my little dish because that way I will eat a lot less than just put in the, my, this bag by me and just keep mindlessly eating out of the bag. Ba -bum -bum. Okay, the next thing, if you're craving something salty, here's what I do. I have found this is a very low calorie way to curb the sugar uh, craving. I will go and get sweet pickles. Now, I have this one, which are the whole little sweet pickles. These are no sugar. Here's what I wanna tell you about this. I was a little scared to get the no sugar, but interestingly enough, I'm ending up liking these better than the next ones I'm gonna show you. The flavor. This has got a little bit of a cinnamon nutmeg flavoring to it, and I don't know what it is, but I, it's really surprising. I really like it. So these are zero calories, which I'm not really sure how that can happen. Um, and it's one ounce, so two pickles is considered zero calories. And there's no sugar, there's no protein, it's not much of anything besides baby cucumbers soaked in some kind of sugary juice. The next thing is like your typical bread and butter chip pickles. These are really good too. And these are 30 calories and you get six pickle chips. I don't eat just six pickle chips, let's be real. And I don't eat just two of those other ones. I might have four of those and maybe I'll have six to 12 of these. So really when you combine it, it's, it's still a lot lower than eating a piece of cake or a cookie or any other sugary thing, baked good, you know, that I will feel a bad about after I eat. So these two things I don't feel bad about and I get my sugar craving out of the way. All right, let's go on and 
going to do yoga. Okay, and one of the simple dinners that we pretty much have on a weekly basis is a baked potato with sauteed vegetables. That's it, no meat. Usually in the week, we always have some meatless meals incorporated, and that's kind of easy to do. Any kind of pasta, like a spaghetti, you know, is an easy one to do to make a regular meatless meal. So I'm gonna show you that simple little creation and how to make it a little bit tastier without really using the butter or the sour cream. Now you can still do it, but I notice for myself, I don't need all that stuff. If I incorporate it, like I'm gonna show you. So now that we're home from yoga, I have worked up an appetite. So we're gonna make that baked potato and sauteed vegetable meal. Now for your sauteed vegetables, you can really use what you like. I'm gonna show you what I put in mine, but feel free to add or delete really anything you'd like. Now, just a little tip that I found. I'm gonna get started on these vegetables first and let them start sauteing for maybe 10 minutes or so before I put my potato in the microwave. Now, you can obviously put it in the oven, the potatoes, but I don't have a lot of time, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna wrap it in a wet paper towel, put it in the microwave, and it'll be done in like eight minutes. I wish you guys could smell how good this smells. So now the vegetables have been going for a little bit, so I'm gonna put my potato in. All I do is take a paper towel, wet it, and wrap it around my potato. It's not soaking wet, um, but it's damp enough that it's going to give it some moisture while it cooks. Okay, now my potato is done, my vegetables are done, so let's put this all together. Now, before I add the vegetables to the top of my potato, I am gonna add a little bit of my vegan cheese. It will just add a little bit more flavor with the potato and the vegetables, but feel free to use your normal cheese. Just to let you know, I did put this potato back in the microwave for about 45 seconds just to melt that cheese. So now let's add our vegetables. And I'm gonna add these just right on top of the potato. Now, if the vegetables turn out to be not as seasoned enough for you, add a little bit more sea salt, pepper, and you're good to go. All right, now let's try this out. I mean, obviously I've had it before, many times. I like it. Mm. To me, it's simple goodness. Now that we're done with dinner, and we're down here in the villages, Florida, I thought it would be fun if you want to stick around. I'm going to take you with us down to one of the town squares. They're having a Christmas tree lighting tonight. You will get an idea of the atmosphere that goes on in one of the town squares. It's going to be a little bit busier because they are having the Christmas tree lighting, but it's so fun. This is one of the things I love about being in the villages because after dinner time, my husband and I will typically get in the golf cart and we'll go to one of the town squares, listen to music for a little while before we come home and watch TV. We really enjoy it. Hello.
I hope you had a lot of fun coming out with us. If you wanna see more ideas on what I eat throughout the week, let me know in the comment section and we will do this kind of video one more time in between the week of Christmas and New Year, and that will get you really set for the new year to come. Until I see you next time, my friends, stay beautiful on the inside and out.